gentlemen online, uh, Mr. Dyhouse and Mr. Frost, if you can both hear me. Yeah, I can hear you from Matthew Dyhouse. Right. Could I uh, ask you both? What about Mr. Frost? Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. That's lovely. Could I ask both of you, when you're not actually speaking, to mute and uh, hit your camera off, please? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. OK, that is fine. Right, we will uh, start the uh, hearing meeting and both of you uh, welcome. You must uh, excuse us if we have a few hiccups this end, but there's been a few technology problems, as you can appreciate. Technology is all right when it's working, but when it's not, it can give us all sorts of problems. But I'm sure one way or another, we will get through it all right. My uh, first item is the, to remind everyone, including yourselves, that this meeting is webcast and an audio recording will be made. And the first item I must do is apologies for absence. Is there any apologies received uh, from the officers to the officers? No, there's been no apologies received. Thank you for that. Declarations of interest. Is there any interest from anybody? I've, I feel that I must declare an interest which must be recorded because the applicant actually lives in my division but I do not know the applicant, uh, applicant personally, and I would not know him if he walked down the street and brushed shoulders with me. So I have no interest whatsoever, which will affect my decision on this application. OK, is the uh, legal prepared to accept that? That's lovely. Thank you very much. I will now run through a few uh, other procedures, which I must do, which is boring for uh, everyone listening who's been through it many times but uh i've, I've opened the hearing and uh i will confirm that if uh, any parties that have responded to this application are not present there will be uh, an officer will read out part of their submission to this uh, authority and to members present so they can hear that is that correct and i'm just looking to the uh for those online looking to the uh, licensing officer for confirmation on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, as part of my report, I'll um, briefly mention what the um, representations consisted of, and um, obviously, the members have a copy of the representations, and the applicant has also been sent a copy of the representations at the time that they were made. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Rachel. Uh, the next item is. I must uh, address the register of all interest. I believe I've done that. Uh, I will consider now, at this time, any uh, submitted request from any party for permission for another person to appear at the hearing. And I don't believe there is anything uh, with regards that, if necessary, this uh, subcommittee could have retired to uh, deliver it before we want to make a decision later on. And, uh, but as the applicant and the agent are online, I believe that everything is being acceptable to legal and the licensing officer who are nodding to me. Right. Thank you. The, uh, the hearing will take the uh, form of a regular table discussion, as you probably gathered because of my references to the officers. Um, I will remind everyone that the purpose of the hearing should be borne in mind at all times, and that is to enable those with the right to appear, which they've had, to amplify their written uh, application or representations. While that is clear that uh, with the absence of anybody here at this meeting, that everyone's happy with their uh, representations, which they've sent, and you will get the opportunity to speak if you so wish as the meeting progresses. Uh, I would like to confirm that I have read all the papers that I have received and that my uh, colleagues either side of me, Councillor Saunton and Councillor Travis, has also read the uh, papers in which they are acknowledged. Uh, I would uh, just like to make it clear 
that uh, being online and not in room, and this is to the applicant and the agent, if you do wish to speak, just stick your hand up or just interrupt and uh, we will uh, try to accommodate you as we progress through. Now, I'd just like to uh, confirm, and this I'd like an answer from the two online, is that the uh, parties have uh, seen and understood the procedure which is to be followed at this hearing. Are you both happy? Could you just answer that, please? Yes, I'm happy. Yes, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Right, we will now move on to the presentations. And the uh, first presentation is the oral uh, presentation from the licensing officer uh, who will present their report uh, and the details of the application. Thanks, Steve. Um, yeah, so this is um, to consider an application for the grant of a premises license application that we've received um, for an event at Yoke Showgrounds. The um, application is for um, a, a sort of yeah, annual event, a maximum of. Um, could, I, could I just interrupt you, Rachel? Could I just ask the two uh, persons online, can they hear the officer clearly? Yes, I can. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the, it's for um, an annual event um, lasting up to 10 days. Um, the application consists of um, regular entertainment, so live recorded music, as well as um, the sale of alcohol at the event. And the application also and the plan shows that there's also going to be other activities which include a fairground, Santa Toronto, and UV Golf. Um, and an ice cream. And just to be clear, the um, the only matters that can be considered as part of the application are the regulated entertainment and the sale by retail of alcohol, because the other activities that have been mentioned are outside of the scope of the Licensing Act. Um, as part of the application, we um, there was a representation made um, from Avon Sunset Police. However, um, there was a the negotiation took place and an applicant agreed conditions with the police which satisfied their concerns. Um, one of the conditions which was agreed is that um, the um, the event the the application would just be for this year's event in 2023. So meaning that if the applicant wishes to hold the event again in subsequent years, they would have to make a further licensing application. Um, and they also agreed other you know, conditions, you know, regarding security, stewarding, um, and, and those kind of like see, police matters that concern the police. And um, I've included a full copy of the proposed, you know, all the conditions that were agreed by the police and also the um, information that was volunteered um, by the applicant when they submitted their application. Um, we also received um, three representations from local residents. Um, and as part of the um, process, we, you know, I did try and engage with them in the process and, you know, also kind of asked the applicant if there were measures that they could introduce that might help satisfy them in certain the local residents. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to, you know, reach a satisfactory sort of outcome. Um, and like I say, I have, you know, attempted to contact the community member representations via email and letter, but however, unfortunately, um, and as we can see that they haven't officially attended today, um, I just wanted to um, go over the contents of their representations. So they were mainly concerned with um, issues to do with noise, which they could result in being you know, disturbed sleep and, um, you know, Kind of, you know, especially sort of on the weekends when it was going on, you know, to eleven o'clock, they people were a bit concerned that it would, you know, affect them in that way. Um, and one representation also mentioned that um, they um, had there was concerns to do with people um, intrude, you know, intruding onto their property and sort of potentially causing damage. And um, like I say that I did ask for sort of further information about that, but unfortunately haven't received anything that I could include in my report. Um, and I think just to finish off, the, um, we're also satisfied that the applicant complied with the advertising regulations in terms of displaying the notices at the premises and also the local newspaper. So, and, and that concludes my report. Thank you. I would uh, 
like to thank the uh, licensing officer for uh, succinct the uh, report to this committee. And uh, just before I start open, I just got just got one question from myself, which I would like to ask, and that's uh, the police with the, the initial objection are fully satisfied with the, the terms and conditions of this application now going forward with the change to a, a one-off event. Yes, that's correct. They're aware of another, a, a number of other conditions that they, um, or ag agreements that they reached the applicant, but as a result of their negotiations, they have withdrawn their representation and therefore they weren't, you know, invited to be part of the hearing process because their concerns have been satisfied, uh, you know, with the applicants. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Is there anybody else, any other members got any questions they would like to ask the officer before I move on? Uh, yeah, I've got one, one question. Excuse me, one question really. Uh, are the numbers limited on, on this event? And what mechanism, if, if they are, what mechanism is in place to uh, control the development? Um, the, on the application form, the, um, the applicant has said that they expect the um, there to be sort of like up to sort of like over 3,000 people attending the event at any one time. And the, um, you know, so we would expect them to, you know, kind of monitor numbers of people to ensure that they're not going over that capacity or, and, you know, the same capacity for the site. Mm -hmm. Finished your question, yeah. Councillor Solomon? For the moment, yeah. 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 Thank you. Councillor Crevis. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm not sure what the reason for the applicant. Well, I think for the officer to start with, maybe for the applicant, if they um, speak later. Um, with regard to police objections, I mean, um, the fact that we haven't got any, we're not here, and they've been satisfied. Um, those conditions, that would be useful to move on, know what they are. But the thing that surprised me was, one of those conditions is that this is a one-time event for one year. So obviously it says 10 days, but we don't actually have a date for those 10 days, do we, that I saw, unless I missed that. And I assume that was because they would vary each year initially. So I assume they already know the dates for the applicants, or already know the dates for this year. Um, and I was really more for the legal thing, because obviously this is a full-blown license application rather than a tens notice, um, which is useful because you've got all the conditions on, I suppose. Um, but can you literally, and this is something I don't know, can, can they, is it legal to just have a license that basically expires after the event? Yeah. If it's a condition for long, just for a double check that. Um, yes, that's perfectly um, allowable to happen. And, um, you know, certainly if there are, you know, good festivals and things like that, then that is usually the case where they would be sort of time limited. And certainly the um, on the application for, um, obviously, this is a little bit different because I think the intention of the applicant was that this would be kind of like an, an open-ended license so that they could run it in future years. Um, but normally, if, they, if the intention at the outset was to have a time-limited um, license, then the applicant would put on the application form that they intend the license to start on X date and then finish on, you know, Y date. Um, but like I say, this was, this, you know, came... Um, this was agreed subsequently, so they wouldn't have put that information on the application for. Thank you. Do you got anything? No, Chair. Excuse me, no, Chair. Um, the um, officer has answered that question. That's got, if the applicant's happy for it to be that year, then that's fine. Yeah, thank you. And uh, as you've, you've answered, I, I believe everything about the dates, and it's, it's yearly, yeah, unless you want to uh, elaborate a little bit more on it. Um, the uh, the um, I believe that the actual dates that the applicant intends to run the event would be part of their of their event management plan. I don't have that information to hand about you know what the actual dates are that they intend to run this event, but I'm sure the applicant would be able to answer that. Can I come back to the question? Yeah, yeah, you can come back and do another question, but regarding the dates, one thing I think you can't be sure is that it's uh, between now and Christmas. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, carry on, Marcus. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, you thought you thought me know what my question was going to be, and it was, um, bear with me one moment. Um, yeah, that's it, PHO. Um, PHO, did you make any comment at all, good or bad? 
Well, no, we didn't receive any information from them, and they certainly didn't make a representation. No. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody else indicating in the room that they want to speak, and uh, I will move on. Um, I will uh, move um, swiftly on. I've not seen anybody else who's indicated at this time. They may have a question after the uh, applicant or the agent has uh, done their said their sort of few words. I'm going to review, uh, go through my sort of uh, preamble, which I've got in front of me. I'm not going to read out every line because I believe some of them are not applicable, but I'm sure the legal officer sat on my right hand side here will uh, pick me up if I need to go back on anything, but I'm going to move straight to the applicant license hold and license holder to present their case and call any witnesses they may wish to call in support of their application. Who wants to speak first? Um, I'll speak first, that's fine. And who's? Sorry, so who for, those of, for those of you that I don't know I have a screen me. in front of me, sorry, if you could just say your name. Yeah, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jordan Frost. I'm, I'm the event coordinator and Matt's employed me to um, oversee the event for him this year. That's fine, carry on, sir. OK, so um, with regards, thank you to Rachel for her comments and thank you to um, all three of you gentlemen for your comments so far. Um, with regards to the uh, representations from the members of the public with regards to noise. Um, I did send some comments back to Rachel with steps that we'd like to put in place. Um, some of those steps include um, taking uh, noise readings near the properties that they live and also <coughs> including a dedicated hotline number so that they can be we can be contactable during the event in case they've got any concerns. Um, I'd just like to point out also that unlike events that have been held there in the past, uh, like Somerset Tribute Festival, flashback, boxing events and firework events that happened quite recently, um, our event isn't a festival. It's not an open air event. Um, the music's confined to a tented structure. Music levels will be kept low. Um, the structure has a closable door, so this helps as well with outbreak. And um, the tented structure is towards the bottom end of the showground, uh, towards the A37 and um, further away from those properties. So we're hoping that outbreak will be low. Um, <clears throat> just one other point to add is that there's no camping at the event, so there's no overnight outbreak at all for any noise or anything like that. Fireworks, they'll be set off no later than 8 p.m. on the 16th of December, and they'll last no longer than 15 minutes. Um, oh, and one more thing, I've obtained the sound levels as well from past events from sound engineers that I know well, and um, their levels were well below that, that were agreed by Somerset Council, and we are working to those same levels as per our uh, event management plan. And uh, that's all I've got to say. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Frost. <clears throat> uh, just before I move on to ask uh, my colleagues if they've got any questions, does your agent have anything that he wishes to add to that? Um, I'm the agent, so um, Matt's the um, application holder. But I don't know if he's got anything. Matt, do you? Oh, sorry. My paper says it the other way around. <laughs> Administration uh, slip up there. Say administration slip up there, but no problem. OK, right. You're happy with what you've said at this moment in time. I will now ask my colleagues if they've got any questions they wish to uh, ask you theirself. And I will go in the same order. Uh, Councillor Salton. No, he has indicated no, there's nothing to us say. And Councillor Clavis? Absolutely to us share. That's why I keep under three hours. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank well, you. Just, uh, you probably didn't hear what he said under his breath. He would try to keep it under three hours. I can assure you he will keep it under three hours. He will keep it under three minutes as well. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's a good way there. Um, right, okay, so um, just to say, Mr. George, uh, excellent. I mean, the application form, I mean, um, and the operating schedule, fantastic. Um, I don't think I've ever seen an application form to comprehensive set. Um, obviously, I've noticed that the, um, I presume DPS, obviously, that's a um, director's responsibility appointing them, I suppose, when we agreed to it, but there was a little bit less information. What I was interested in is the efforts you put into the noise readings and um, I think it is what you haven't said is how often you'll do them all. You know, we're not expecting you to go out and buy a five thousand pound piece of equipment to take take the noise readings. You can go a lot easier than that. But I think what I'm going to say is um, I assume you're going to do them quite regularly because obviously that would be in your interest for further application next year. Um, I thought you um, everything else you said I think is probably there's probably um, Dealt with most of my questions. The fact that you said they're further away from the properties, interested to know about the fireworks, and um, the fact no camping, that was one of my questions. Um, I assume that there's a fair down there, they will be staying overnight. Um, that's a question if you want to come back to that in a minute. Um, and I suppose my main concern is just as an example to the committee is. The objections initially from the police, um, there's been very little information, and I don't really need a list, full list of them because I've seen police objections before, they can be quite lengthy. Just an example of a couple of things they were concerned about on what you've done to um, mitigate them or point mitigation methods to um, mean that they've withdrawn any objections and they're happy. I'll leave out that for a minute, Chair. Thank you. Could I um could I uh, interject there? I think the main the main objection from the police was having an open ended event to go on from year to year, whereas it's now just going to be a one off event. As the licensing officer did say previously, there was a part of the event management plan uh, as a lot of those uh, uh, information on and what have you, and I I think it's. Uh, for the police to remove their objection, they must they are satisfied with everything which they have had put them in front of them, which includes the operating plan. But I would just ask the licensing officer to confirm that. Um, yeah, I think the um, when the police made the objection and then subsequently had a discussion with the applicant, the result of that was some slight amendments to um, conditions set up with to do with a, a slight adjustment to the um, security staff and um, you know the, the ratios at which they are employed and the, the timings at which they would be employed at the event if it goes ahead. Um, and like I say, the, that that was it was just kind of like minor adjustments. I think, and obviously the applicant engaged with the police, and they, you know, it ended up in a satisfactory situation for both parties. Thank you for that, Rachel. I hope that answers your query, uh, Marcus. Um, I think you know, I would like. I think I could still ask the applicant for a. Um, uh, so just regarding the noise reading ceases, how often, etc. on those? Yeah, so uh, for Marcus, so the readings will take place during um, during the event from the opening at 10 a.m. They'll continue throughout the day, probably at an hourly rate. Um, but then when live music's on, live and recorded music, that will happen every half an hour between the time that the live music starts and the time that it finishes uh, in in not only the locations from the complainants but also other locations that are defined by um by us um just another um answer for a question you asked as well is that um there'll be a small number of crew that will camp overnight um, but it's in the very far bottom corner of the showground by closest to the rugby club and um the fairground operators will also camp overnight as well thank you for that okay marcus um actually i think that's pretty much pretty much it apart from um there was one question this is more for curiosity on your um reading your um if i can share one more question yeah, it's more for because reading reading your event management plan it was very comprehensive. Um and um yeah, it, the, one of the two questions I had was just because we talk about 
nuisance exception, noise exception. Obviously, some of the other actually were concerned with people getting into um, yeah, venturing onto their property. Um, just give me, you talk about unaccompanied people under the age of 18 um, being unaccompanied um, and how you all make sure they are accompanied. Um, from ex how are you going to ensure that um, they are? Because just from experience, you know, families go together and suddenly the adults are in one place and the kids are all um, going somewhere else. So I just want to know about that. And secondly, and, um, and I think I'd just like to congratulate you on how comprehensive you were on some of your some of your um, fire regulations and things like LPGs, although I did, I was curious about who decides how much LPG and what are your food events are going to need during the weekend. I thought that um, if you just concentrate on the unaccompanied children for me, please. <coughs> yep, okay, Could so... Could um... answer that one briefly, and we don't want, I don't want a complex uh, report on it, I mean, because obviously you've addressed all those things in your site management plan. Thank you. Yep, so... Um... Children that arrive on site to the entrance of the event and accompanied by an adult will be refused access. So if they come with their families, that's perfectly fine. And once they're inside the event, they can, you know, they can do what they want. They can go down to the fairground or they can, whilst their parents are looking at the stalls, but they won't be allowed to enter the site without an adult. Yeah. Thank you very, thank you very much for that. OK, Marcus, I'm going, to move, I'm going to move on now. Um, now, I'm going to ask the, the applicant and this agent now, because I'm get, we're getting to the stage where I'm going to wrap this up now, uh, if they have anything further which they want to say uh, to the committee, and what we will be doing then, we'll be asking you two gentlemen to stay online. We will leave the room to another room, make our decision, and come back with that decision of which you will get a full written uh, re report on, on that decision, but you will know uh, at the uh, before we close the meeting fully what the result of the uh, hearing will be. But if there's anything else you wish to add, now is the time to say it. Um, I'm perfectly happy, thank you. Um, Thank you very much indeed. Can I just look into the officers? Has any the license, the licensing officer or the legal officer, are they anything they want to add before I adjourn the meeting and we depart to another room? Thank you. Okay, I will now officially adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Sorry, House, Mr. Frost, can you both hear us okay? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Well, oh, that's lovely. Just to save safety laying you any longer, the um, committee has uh, made their had their deliberations and, and made their recommendations, and we're happy to approve the uh, license for this year's events. We're pleased to hear your measures for um, keeping control of the numbers and for the monitoring of the uh, noise levels because we feel that will be beneficial and helpful to any future events which you may wish to put on there and just to add you will be getting a full written response from our um, legal officer and i believe that is within the next seven days and uh, um, um just like to wish you all the best for your event in the coming days or weeks leading up to christmas Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much and have a good day.